I recently spoke to Senator Steve Daines in a virtual interview. Here's how we, he responded to my questions about the deficit, Republican leadership, and more. The news headlines this week regarding our massive deficit are using stronger language. The economists are saying they're alarmed. They're calling the numbers that we could reach in the next decade staggering. What needs to be done? Yeah, well, I agree with those economists. We're at nearly $35 trillion of debt. Uh, this is a crisis that our country is facing. You just can't continue to spend more money than you're taking in. The thing that needs to happen in Congress is we need to pass an amendment to the Constitution that requires a balanced budget. To put accountability on the members of Congress to either produce a balanced budget or suspend their pay. Until accountability is brought to the members of Congress, I'm concerned they'll never have the will to address this fiscal crisis that we are facing. In Montana, state legislators are required by law to pass a balanced budget before they leave every two years when they serve in Helena. We need the same kind of accountability in Washington. I want to move on to homelessness. We are doing many local news stories on homelessness nearly every week. And I just pulled up some national stories. Other areas like California announcing that that state will now spend $6.4 billion on its homelessness crisis, even though um, it, you know, it fears it may not have that much money. And Chicago was trying to do something called a mansion tax that flopped. But we can see communities and states trying new tactics now to deal with the homeless issue. Well, you know, I grew up uh, in the home building business. My dad and mom in Bozeman were contractors, you know, back in the 70s. Uh, I'll tell you, one of the big problems we face right now is just the cost of housing. We've seen the explosive inflation over the course of the last several years. You know, overall, nationally, uh, prices are up uh, 20 percent from where they were when President Biden first took office. That's hitting Montanans directly in their pocketbook. Price of fuel, price of groceries. Somebody said the most expensive vehicle a Montanan drives now is their shopping cart. It costs a lot more to go to the grocery store. So this is why we've got to come back and address some these core issues of inflation, just the cost of living, and why it's so important we have policies that promote more competition and energy. More made in America energy is a great place to start as a way to try to lower costs uh, as we try to address these issues right now facing so many American people right in their pocketbooks. Okay. Um, let's also move on to a national issue, wildfires. We deal with them quite a lot in Montana, but very early this season, we already saw those massive wildfires in Texas, and, and they it moved up to some other states like Oklahoma as well. Uh, we're concerned because this winter was so dry and so warm. Uh, you know, what kind of um, preparations are in place for what could be a very bad wildfire season? Yeah, well, we're very concerned. You know, last winter we had a cold winter and a lot of snow. And this winter, we've had a warmer winter and a lot less snowpack. Look, we're going to have a longer fire season, most likely, in Montana. Uh, and that's why it's so important. One, there's preparedness in terms of, of, of fire firing capabilities to get the contracts in place here to make sure we are ready, ready to, to stop these fires before they become massive aerial bombardment and so forth and the fire crews on the ground. But second, it highlights the importance and the need for more forest management. That's a great tool we have to help mitigate the risk of catastrophic wildfires. Sadly, it's been some of these radical environmental groups that litigate so many of the timber harvests in Montana and stop collaborative efforts to get in and thin the forests. Because either we're gonna be managing the forests or the forests are gonna manage us through these catastrophic wildfires. We need common sense uh, judges common sense policies and laws to get our loggers back into the forest managing them because the forests are an active growing ecosystem. They're building more fuels. You've got to manage them. You've got to thin them. These environmental groups are one of our, our, our biggest obstacles to getting common sense forest management done in Montana. All right. Thank you, Senator. I want to get on to Republican leadership. We have seen the uh, reports that Mitch McConnell will be stepping down from Republican leadership in the Senate. Are you a person who might be stepping up to take a leadership role? 
Well, I, I'm in a leadership role today. I chair the Republican Senatorial Committee. My responsibility nationally is to work to get more Republican senators elected across our country so that Republicans have control of the United States Senate in 2025. My focus is getting that majority. It's very important. And by the way, uh, that uh, that race runs right through Montana. If Montanans elect Tim Shee to the United States Senate, we will take control of the United States Senate. It has profound consequences for the Supreme Court, for tax cuts going forward in 25. Uh, but we'll wait and see. We'll wait until after the election. But I'm focused on getting the majority back. That's the most important thing we can do at this moment for our kids and our grandkids. If your party asked you to be the Republican leader of the Senate, would you say yes? Well, you always have to consider uh, if you're being drafted or asked to do it. President Trump has expressed uh, some interest, perhaps me thinking about that. But I don't aspire to be the leader. I really don't. Uh, I, I want to uh, lead as I do right now as the uh, Senate uh, committee chairman. But we'll wait and see what happens after the election in, in November. Um, there's going to be some great uh, men and women who are going to be thinking about doing that role. And I'm sure we'll pick a great leader going into uh, January 25. I think it's time to have a change in leadership. And I applaud Mitch McConnell's accomplishments in the past. Also, uh, stepping down early, it gives us time here to sort out the future before we go in January of 25. I'm going to boldly take this a step further, Senator. Should uh, former President Trump ask you to be on his ticket, ask you to be his candidate as vice president, would you say yes? <laughs> well, that's a big ask right there. Uh, he's he's looking at a, a long list. I've had conversations with the, with the team here about who I think would make a great uh, vice presidential nominee for President Trump. It's a very important pick for the president. I, I just spoke with President Trump. In fact, last night we were talking about some of the Senate races. We talk frequently. Uh, but whoever President Trump picks as his vice president, uh, when Trump's elected in in uh, in 24, uh, Trump can only serve for four years because he served four years prior. That vice president will likely be the nominee for for the Republicans in uh, in 29. So it's a very important pick. And I know there's some great men and women they're looking at right now. Uh, I've not been asked. Uh, I've been given some input who I think could be a great vice presidential pick for the Trump team. We'll see where it goes from there. And you can see that uh, interview at NBCMontana.com.